So the whistleblower complaint is out um, in a redacted version, uh, and it seems to be pretty bad for President Trump. <laughs> so I'm going to go through this complaint, uh, which is, again, mostly mostly unclassified, but there are some redactions in it. Uh, now, the complaint starts with saying that the whistleblower is reporting an urgent concern. And now, uh, new reporting, by the way, to add to this, is that the whistleblower has been kind of identified, not really, though. Um, only as someone who worked for the CIA, works for the CIA uh, and was close to the White House. So either he worked in the White House or he was very close to the White House. Uh, I think he was on detail in the White House. A again, very new report, okay, that just came out. So CIA person. All right. So that's the whistleblower, right? So now he's got an urgent concern. And in the complaint, it's written that in the course of my official duties, I have received information from multiple U.S. government officials that the president of the United States is using the power of his office to solicit interference from a foreign country in the 2020 U.S. election. This interference includes, among other things, pressuring a foreign country to investigate one of the president's main domestic political rivals. The president's personal lawyer, Mr. Rudolph Giuliani, is a central figure in this effort. Attorney General William Barr appears to be involved as well. Mm, yikes. Uh, so that's important. Giuliani is involved. Donald Trump's personal lawyer. Uh, and it, look, he should not be in any sort of a, a, a diplomatic capacity whatsoever. Again, Donald Trump's personal lawyer is actually not part of the government. What, what is he doing? What is he doing? Doing Donald Trump's personal bidding. That's what he's doing. Uh, and, of course, Attorney General, General William Barr should also not be involved. It's crazy. Now, Barr, for his part, by the way, should be forced to recuse himself. Plain and simple. Okay, more. Uh, he said, I was not a direct witness, and this is also important, to most of the events described. However, I found my colleagues' account of these events to be credible because on almost all cases, multiple officials recounted the fact patterns that were consistent with one another. In addition, a variety of information consistent with these private accounts has been reported publicly. Again, really important, adding to the credibility. So now Republicans, of course, have already jumped on that. Oh, see, he didn't even see half the stuff. So it's, uh, what, secondhand uh, account? I mean, come on. Well, actually, this was found credible by the intelligence community, Inspector General Michael Atkinson. So that's also important. So there is an air of credibility about these allegations. So there are more sections of note. Uh, multiple White House officials told the whistleblower that they were deeply disturbed by what transpired in the phone call, uh, in which Trump had sought to pressure the Ukrainian leader to take actions, right? This involved Donald Trump saying, we've been very, very good to Ukraine, but it has not been reciprocal. And that's really important. Uh, now, then he says, I want to ask you a favor. Look into CrowdStrike. Now, CrowdStrike is a U.S. Uh, uh, security firm that exposed DNC hacks by the Russians, by Russian intelligence. Uh, now, there's a big conspiracy uh, involved with that about a supposed DNC server hidden somewhere in Ukraine. It, this is crazy stuff. And then, not only look into CrowdStrike, who we have a beef with, uh, but also look into Joe Biden. Look into Joe Biden, look into his son, Hunter Biden, right? So now they said look into Hunter Biden because Hunter Biden just happens to be on the board of a Ukrainian gas company. Now, Zelensky did not bring up Biden. Uh, it was Donald Trump. And he brought it up in the, in the context of corruption in Ukraine. Oh, there's a lot of corruption going on in Ukraine, if you know what I mean. Uh, and so, you know, why don't we have you look into uh, Hunter Biden because of that? Now, it's important to note, too, that that call happened in the context of Donald Trump only about $400 million in military aid to Ukraine. So now that, that aid money is basically to protect Ukraine against Russian aggression, as Russia has already annexed Crimea. So here you have Zelensky in a tough, difficult position because he's like, well, I don't want Russia coming in and annexing more of my country. We need this aid money from the United States. Donald Trump has held up this aid money before this call, and I know it's been held up. So what am I supposed to do? Oh, well, I'm supposed to kiss his ass. 
again, Congress had already appropriated this money, but Trump had the Office of Management and Budget hold the money up at the last minute, several days before this call. And so it, it's, not a, it's not a stretch to think that he was dangling that money in front of Zelensky and then saying, I need to ask you a favor. Can, can you help your old friend out, Donald Trump? Because we've been very good to you, but it just hasn't been reciprocal. Look, anybody with a brain sees that. Okay. Uh, now, that favor, of course, would help him politically, so that uh, would be illegal because it's a campaign finance violation. Okay. So now we have more information about the lead up to that call, which is also really interesting. Now, the whistleblower details how Ukraine's prosecutor general, Yuri Litsenko, had made a series of corruption allegations in March 2019. Now, that, that is uh, against several U.S. officials, one of them including Joe Biden. Uh, Joe Biden's part uh, would be in removing a specific prosecutor uh, who was looking into that gas company. So that's important context, and that's Republicans, uh, what they're latching on to. They're saying, well, they're, uh, they, they, that Joe Biden uh, inappropriately used his position to ask the Ukrainian government to fire a prosecutor that was looking into that gas company. But this was a position held by the United States government and an international coalition. That coalition found that, that prosecutor to be corrupt. And so they said, again, with the backing of the entire world, you got to get rid of this person. They're deeply, deeply corrupt. And so one side's got, you know, allegations of corruption. The other side's of allegations of corruption. Uh, but only one is correct. All right. So now those allegations were followed by news uh, that Giuliani had uh, met on two occasions with Lutsenko and had planned to travel to Ukraine in May to pursue investigations related to Donald Trump's 2020 re-election bid. Uh, so Giuliani goes to Ukraine he invest to, to try to investigate Biden. Upon learning that multiple U.S. officials told the whistleblower that they were deeply concerned by what they viewed as Mr. Giuliani's circumvention of national security decision-making processes. Okay, so, you know, again, Giuliani, Donald Trump's personal lawyer, going to UK, uh, Ukraine to do personal investigations against his political opponents. While also saying that he, and, and this is what Giuliani's saying, is that he was acting... Uh, on orders from the, 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 the State Department. And he says later on, I've got texts. I have texts proving that the State Department asked me to go and do this. So who's lying? Who's being honest? What kind of corruption did he get himself into? What kind of trouble did Giuliani just get himself into? Now, more damning information, again, from the report, or uh, from the complaint. Multiple U.S. officials also told the whistleblower that Ukrainian leadership was led to believe that a phone call or meeting between Trump and Zelensky would depend on whether Zelensky showed a willingness to play ball on the issues aired by Lutsenko and Giuliani. Meaning, hey, you, if, you, you know, if you want a meeting with Trump to discuss that money that's being held up, you need to go look into Biden and the insane conspiracy theory about that DNC server that's allegedly sitting in the Ukraine right now. Now, this is backed up by a former advisor to President Zelensky. He told ABC News on Wednesday that President Trump's desire for the two leaders to discuss a possible investigation into Joe Biden was a precondition for their July 25th call. This is Sergei uh, Lushenko. He said, quote, it was clear that Trump will only have communications if they will discuss the Biden case. This issue was raised many times. I know that Ukrainian officials understood. They understood all right. In order to help U.S. and Ukrainian cooperation against Russia, they had to do these investigations into Biden. It, it's absolutely incredible. Again, he's in a very difficult spot, Zelensky was. He had to have that money. All right. So now, a day after the call, the whistleblower said that the U.S. envoy to Ukraine, Kurt Volker, 
and U.S. Ambassador to the EU Gordon Sondland had also met with Ukrainian officials and provided them with advice on how to navigate Donald Trump's demands. So again, everybody knows. Everybody knows what the demands were. Now, Giuliani also traveled to Madrid to meet with a Zelensky advisor and reached out to several other Ukrainian officials as a direct follow-up to the call. So now he goes to Madrid, meets with this guy, and, and, and you know, I don't know the conversation that they had, but I'm going to speculate and, and, and ask, like, hey, was this about the investigate? How are you doing in that investigation into Biden? You doing good? Need a little help? Is everything all right? I mean, again, I don't know. I, I wouldn't be surprised if that's how the conversation actually uh, came out. Uh, but uh, okay, more. Um, th- see, it, what's worse than the call, I think, and this call is bad enough, but what's worse than the crime is often the cover up. So now let's get to that part because that's really interesting. Uh, the whistleblower said that in the days after the call, White House officials had intervened to lock down all records of the call, especially the word for word transcript. So again, going back to what was released yesterday, the so-called transcript was literally just a memorandum. That was it. Not the actual transcript, no actual recording because they stuck it somewhere safe. In fact, White House lawyers directed officials to load the electronic transcript onto a separate system that is generally used to handle classified information despite there being no national security sensitive material on the phone call. So that sounds a lot like a private server. Ironic. Uh, Now, a footnote also states that this was not the first time that the Trump administration had used that kind of system for the purpose of protecting politically sensitive rather than national security sensitive information. So they are using, so they they are basically taking anything that can hurt Donald Trump politically and sticking it in a safe. I mean, it kind of makes sense. But then again, like, you got to think, wow, that, I mean, how much dirt do you, how dirty is this dirt that you've got to stick it in this national security sensitive system? This is not good. (laughs) This is very, very bad for everyone involved. Not just Trump, but Barr, Giuliani, and Zelensky. It's bad for everybody. Again, he's in a very difficult position, right? Uh, He he needs some money. He doesn't want to have, you know, parts of his country be annexed. And he says, oh, I guess we'll play ball with Trump. Give him what he wants. Look into Biden. He'll release some money. After that, he gets the chance to speak to Donald Trump on the phone, butters him up. I gave you the, you know, I talked about the, the, the memo. Uh, and gave you very clear examples of him saying, oh, yes, Donald Trump, I stayed in one of your Trump hotels. Uh, I can't wait to talk to you. You were a teacher. I I learned from you. Uh, He even used the catchphrase, drain the swamp, in relation to to him winning the election. And so very, very obvious, very obvious. There was huge pressure. uh, And, of course, soliciting a campaign donation, again, 100% illegal. Um, this was confirmed by the White House's own memo that they released as well. It's amazing that they actually thought that that would be a good thing, that that would look great. Nope, wrong. Donald Trump, clearly a criminal. Clear criminal actions. We we have to impeach. And, and not just on the Ukraine issue. I realize that this is one thing. But there's literally a thousand other things, a thousand other crimes that he has actually committed while in office. Get to his finances, get to his finances. If we go the Nancy Pelosi route and only focus tightly on Ukraine, even though there is a clear violation, you got to remember the Mueller report also had 10 clear uh, uh, instances of obstruction of justice. And there would have been more had his staff actually listened to him because Donald Trump orders people to do illegal shit. That's what he does. That's what he does. So... He is in big trouble if they actually uh, do the impeachment right and actually go hard after him. Uh, because, look, if, if we don't, 
And this is my if we do not try to hold President Trump accountable, we might as well not have a constitution anymore. Hey guys, hopefully you enjoyed that free video. Now I'm going to have to ask you a favor. Between the uh, demonetization and the YouTube algorithm messing around with view counts, etc., we're having a hard time adjusting to the new YouTube reality, which is where you guys come in. See, we have a Patreon, patreon.com slash TYTNation set up to help us rely on the, you guys, the viewers, instead of big corporate ads. Look, you know the show. You know how I'm not in favor of big corporations anyway. So help us transition away from relying on the ad model to pay the bills and sign up to be a patron, patreon.com slash TYTNation. That goes a long way to help us keep the lights on. And you guys will know that you're supporting independent progressive media.